For nearly a millennium prior to the establishment of any communication between the eastern and western regions, enigmatic groups of Caucasians were inhabiting the eastern sectors of China. The existence of these individuals has been authenticated by the discovery of remarkable artifacts, impeccably preserved cadavers showcasing distinctly European characteristics. The origins of these tribes, embedded within the depths of Asian culture, pose a conundrum, as it is widely believed that Europe and Asia evolved independently during this epoch, without any form of interaction. The enigmatic entities, shrouded in a veil of obscurity, have left behind no discernible record of their existence apart from their corporeal remains. In the annals of scientific discovery, some moments stand out as transformative. One such moment occurred in 1988 when American scholar Victor Meyer visited a remote museum in China. With no predetermined agenda, Meyer was simply hoping to find something intriguing to occupy his scholarly pursuits. What he stumbled upon, however, was far beyond anything he could have imagined. Within one of the museum's halls lay an array of mummies, human remains that appeared as though their bodies had recently ceased vital function. Astonishingly, these museum artifacts were said to be thousands of years old, plucked from the sands of the Tarim Basin by Chinese explorers in the late 1970s. The Churchman and the Lowland Beauty, two of the most notable examples, perplexed scientists with their distinctly European features, utterly at odds with the native population of China. Further examination of the bodies revealed the secret of their remarkable preservation, a combination of desert dryness, soil-rich and microbe-killing salts, and winter burials in coffins lacking lids or bottoms. Even the clothing worn by these ancient people offered tantalizing hints as to their origin, with intricate patterns and sophisticated woolen garments not known in China at the time. But who were they, and where did they come from? Clues suggest they may have originated in Europe, as the same patterns and techniques have been found in excavations across Germany, Austria, and Scandinavia. The way they were buried also reveals a culture that honored death and mourning with respect and dignity, as the carefully stacked bodies and neatly bandaged jars indicate. Yet the mummy's faces suggest a final scream or song, testament to a time and place far beyond our understanding. The captivating enigma of Wallonian beauty continues to captivate the minds of anthropologists and historians alike. According to Victor Mayer, these people entered the Terran Basin region some four millennia ago. Prior to their arrival, this territory remained uninhabited due to its unforgiving climate, insufficient water, and scarce food supply. Within this era lies the vestiges of a woman's mummified remains, believed to have lived approximately 3,800 years ago and discovered near the locality of Lawan. She is now renowned worldwide as the beauty of Lawan, a sobra cairned by her slender visage, large eyes, impeccably preserved long brown hair, and full eyelashes. Scientists of the anthropological discipline have endeavored to reconstruct her semblance and have artistically rendered a portrait of her and homage to her profound beauty during her lifetime. Alongside the cadaver were found a sieve and a purse brimming with wheat grains, implying that agriculture might have been a prevalent pursuit of the Lawlanian beauty. Based on meticulous research conducted by Victor Meyer and his associates, it was concluded that the woman in question had barely surpassed 40 years of age, with her demise attributed to the harsh and merciless environmental conditions of the desert. Evidently, the contents of her lungs bear witness to the pernicious effects of smoke and sand, whereas her remains expose the gruesome fate of being devoured alive by parasitic lice. The Lawlanian beauty was interred with utmost dignity, adorned in opulent and sumptuous woolen garments, her hair meticulously styled, and her visage embellished with makeup traces of which still endure on her face even after the passage of four millennia. Her clothing was fashioned from warm textiles, substantiating that she was laid to rest in the winter season a contributing factor to her remarkable preservation. The beauty of Lawlan may have perished, but her story endures, a timeless testament to the lives and culture of her people. The Chir Shin Man, 
a towering figure of almost two meters in height, with fair skin and gray hair, was discovered in the vicinity of the city that bears his name. This remarkably preserved mummy, considered by many to be the finest specimen of its kind, appears to have been spared the ravages of decay, with only the passage of time having taken its toll on the desiccated remains. The Chair Shin Man lived around 3,000 years ago and was approximately 50 years old when he passed away. Unlike the native Chinese, the Chair Shin Man's tall stature and fair complexion, along with his light blonde hair and brightly colored robes, set him apart. The tattoos adorning his face further distinguish him from others of his time. Experts believe that the Chir Shin Man may have been a prominent figure in his tribe, as evidenced by the ten different headdresses found buried alongside him, as well as a saddle, a horse skull, and hooves. These finds suggest that horseback travel was already well established during his lifetime, allowing for greater mobility and contact with other cultures, including the Chinese. Among the Chir Shin Man's burial companions were three women, also of significant height, buried in clothing of the same color as the man. Their intricately braided hair and ornate headdresses further suggest a high social status. Sadly, the remains of a three-month-old infant, wrapped in a woolen shroud, were also discovered. The child was laid on a sheep's bellow, with blue stones over its eyes, and an ancient bottle made from an animal horn with a teeth fashioned from a sheep's udder was placed nearby. The tender care taken in preparing the infant's body for burial is evident in the oil residues found on its skin. The discovery of this tiny mummy, along with the 40 or so other mummies of children and over 300 adult mummies uncovered in the Taklamakan Desert, provides a glimpse into the lives of people who faced many hardships during their lifetimes, and yet whose remains have managed to survive the deserts and forgiving conditions to this day. The mystery of origin has long captivated the attention of researchers seeking to unravel the origins of the Caucasoid race in Asia. To tackle this task, they embarked on a painstaking journey of studying the artifacts found in tombs across various parts of the world. Through extensive analysis, striking similarities were uncovered between Chinese mummies and the Pazirik culture of Western Siberia, prompting further exploration of the Terran Basin region. The mummy of a Pazirik man now in the image has revealed surprising similarities with people from the Terran Basin, highlighting the potential interconnectedness of civilizations that were previously thought to be entirely distinct. In fact, Similar wool fabrics with Celtic patterns, clothing patterns, and everyday objects have been found throughout Europe, shedding light on the possibility of a far-reaching influence that spread across continents. The findings from DNA analysis of the mummies revealed that the blood in their veins was not purely European or Asian, suggesting that they had traveled great distances before reaching the desert and interacted extensively with other tribes along the way. This discovery led to the emergence of the theory of the migration of peoples to the Terran Basin around 2500 BC, but that was just the beginning. It turns out that these peoples also brought with them various elements of civilization, such as the wheel with spokes, bronze, and had a significant influence on the Mongoloid tribes. Even in the Chinese language, the words for horse, cow, and cart clearly contain Indo-European roots, lending further credence to the theory. The evidence continues to mount. Local folklore contains legends of blue-eyed blonde people who were the first rulers of the Celestial Empire, and even the Buddhist monastery in Bezeklek, in northeastern Taklamakan, has images of blue-eyed monks. Until the discovery of the burials in 1977, it was widely believed that Chinese culture was unique and developed autonomously. However, the discovery of these mummies and the city built by white people next to their burial site has called into question these assumptions. In fact, these ruins along the Great Silk Road suggest that it was outsiders who built the road and not the Chinese, as previously believed. This realization challenges known historical facts and could have profound implications for our understanding of ancient civilizations. Despite these groundbreaking discoveries, 
The Chinese authorities banned excavations in the Tarim Basin and any research on the mummies already found in the late 1990s. Some of the finds were reburied, while others remained in museums. Some speculate that this decision was driven by the fear that further research would reveal that the Chinese did not discover iron, invent the saddle, or domesticate the horse, all of which may have been accomplished by white people long before them. As we continue to uncover more about our past, the mystery of origin remains a fascinating and enigmatic subject, shrouded in perplexity and bursting with possibilities.